Today's class, we're just looking at the second part of topic two, which was called a growing concern. And we're going to look at organic agriculture today. So producing food organically is becoming more and more popular. Reason being um, because of the negative impacts of fertilizers, um, negative impacts of using pesticides, as well as genetic engineering. Genetic engineering was, um, actually I'll stop here and see if you guys remember that. All right, so um, genetic engineering, um, it's also like genetic, um, genetically modifying um, is pretty much the same thing. It's basically when um, you're altering the DNA makeup of an organism. So since we're talking about agri agriculture or farming, we're going to be talking about crop plants that are being genetically engineered. All right, so um, it could be anything from making a plant more resistant to insects or um, producing higher yield or bigger, uh, bigger crops um, and so on, or or an in increased shelf life, right? So when when you have like tomatoes sitting at the grocery store, um, they'll they'll last longer. And those are just some examples. All right. So when we're talking about organic agriculture, it's producing crops and raising livestock using natural processes. So there's no chemical pesticides being used. Um, instead, they're using things like biological control and things like crop rotation. All right, so methods that are used by organic farmers. Um, so like I mentioned before, biological control. This is when you're using living organisms to control pests. So we had used that one, we had seen that one video where we saw those um, ants being used to control um, other insects because they would eat those other insect pests. Um, another example here, an, an organic berry farm near Edmonton, they use geese to eat insect pests. Um, another common technique is using ladybugs to prey on aphids and control their populations. Okay, another example or another method used by organic farmers would be crop rotation. So basically the same crop, the same crop is not planted on on a particular plot of land for more than a year or two. Okay, so um, not planting the same crop on a particular plot of land for more than a year or two. All right, it ensures that any pests that survive over winter, they're lacking a food source and then um, they're lacking that food source so they can't survive um, in the springtime. Um, another common technique we saw in the video was um, like burning, burning the crops as well um, once harvest is done. And that also ensures that pests can't survive. Uh, number three is sanitation. Um, it's just it's just being cleanliness. Um, um, any material that can act as a habitat for pests is removed. So any plant rubbish is removed, any manure piles, any dead veg vegetation, those are all breeding sites for um, pests. So therefore, just making sure um, all those kind of places are, or all those um, types of things are removed. Uh, next, continuing is biotechnology. So, um, Plants that can be modified by selective breeding or biotechnology. And then we're basically producing plants that have desirable traits. Um, so selective breeding, that's when uh, you're selectively choosing which, which um, organisms to breed um, and therefore creating a plant, for example, that will germinate quickly. Um, and if we have quick production of shoots, that enables those desirable plants to outcompete any of those weed species for resources. Therefore, the weeds um, don't have enough resources to grow. Um, this is controversial in organic farming because um, these are genetically modified foods and organisms. Uh, next is insect hormones. So applying specific hormones, um, insect hormones that regulate insect growth and therefore 
keeping them from reaching sexual maturity. If they don't reach sexual maturity, they are not able to reproduce. So therefore they are controlled. Um, another way is insect pheromones. So pheromones are chemicals that are emitted by male and female um, insects of different species. And they're, they're usually released to attract. So for example, um, chemi it's a chemical emitted by a female insect to attract a male insect. Um, so this can be synthesized in a lab, and then it can be used to lure the males into collecting traps and therefore reducing any chance of reproduction. Another method, natural fertilizers. Um, so the soil, to make sure the soil is fertile and has enough nutrients in it, um, organic farmers can um, recycle organic residues and nutrients such as composted manure, cover crops can be plowed back into the soil to maintain humus, um, and then crop rotation, um, where legumes are planted every few years as a cover crop, that will also replace um, any nitrogen um, in the soil. All right, so next we're looking at safe and effective pesticides. So, Pesticide use, it has proven to be an effective way to increase crop yields, but there are a lot of issues associated with pesticide use, and we've looked at all the examples from the previous class, like DDT, dialdrin, and so on. So what would an ideal pesticide be? Like, what would be the characteristics? So here are some of the characteristics of an ideal pesticide. Firstly, it should be biodegradable, meaning it should be able to break down into harmless chemicals in a short amount of time. We saw that DDT did not do that. It existed and um, it wasn't biodegradable. There are still DDT that's found um, in the environment. Um, it should be target specific, meaning it should only be toxic to the certain species and not to a broad, broad range of organisms. So for example, if you're targeting a pest species, it shouldn't be wiping out beneficial insects, right? Such as bees, which are important pollinators. Uh, should be non-carcinogenic, right? These are um, chemicals that are cancer causing. It should be a safe pesticide. It shouldn't affect the genetic makeup of cells, which will cause cancer cells to develop. It should be non-accumulating, non meaning it's not going to build up in the fatty tissues of humans or other, other um, animals. Um, it should reduce the rate of pest reproduction, so um, slowing down the rate of reproduction, therefore less pests to worry about. And it should be economical, meaning it should be relatively inexpensive to use. All right, and lastly, pesticides for organic agriculture. Pesticides that are used in organic agricult agriculture can be placed in three categories. Um, there are manufactured pesticides, there are genetically modified species and natural pesticides. So when we look at manufactured pesticides, there's three examples I talk about here, uh, pyrethrum, rhodonone, and neem. So pyrethrum, this is coming from the chrysanthemum flower, so it's ex extracted from this flower, and it disrupts the nervous system of insects. Um, so that is how they are controlled. Um, they are low in toxicity to birds, humans, and other mammals. However, they are highly toxic to fish and tadpoles, but they are biodegradable. It's showing here that they are unstable in light and air and therefore rapidly degraded. Um, Erodinone um, comes from the roots of particular legume families and it acts as a respiratory enzyme inhibitor. It's low in toxicity to humans and other mammals, slightly toxic to wildfowl, highly toxic to fish, but it does break down rapidly in sunlight. The next one is the neem coming from the neem tree, it's an insecticide. It disrupts the reproductive cycle of insects. There's not really any significant effect on birds, humans, or other mammals, and it does break down rapidly in water or light. And then we talked about genetically modified species. 
So some genetically modified crop plants, for example, contain the BT gene, Bacillus thuringius, thuringinus is I think how you say it. Um, so it's a naturally occurring microorganism, I believe it's a bacteria, from soil and plant surfaces, and it produces proteins that are toxic to insects. So um, it's practically non-toxic to birds, fish, humans, and other mammals, and it does break down rapidly in sunlight. The only concern about consuming this is that it would be a genetically modified crop plant. Um, so if we look at this figure here, um, engineering resistant corn. So we have this crop of corn that is infected by this insecticide, the corn, the European corn borer. All right, so this is that microorganism, Bacillus thuringinus, and it is inserted into the crop. So the DNA is inserted into the crop, and now the pest will die when feeding on any of that um, part of the plant. All right, so therefore it becomes resistant um, to corn borer infection. And then pesticides that use naturally occurring substances. So some naturally occurring substances can be sulfur, boric acid, copper sulfate, and soap salts. However, copper sulfate and soap salts they don't meet the requirements for a safe uh, pesticide because they do tend to bioaccumulate, so in the fatty tissues of some organisms. All right, so we're going to pause here and we'll watch a couple of these videos. We won't have time to watch them all, but I will leave this in the slide so you guys can watch them on your own.